Hi folks, very sunny out here today. We finally got the time to fix the suspension, put a new suspension strut on the front of Jimmy's van. So come and join me for this one. Right, well as you know, in the previous video, we changed the suspension strut on the other side. Uh, we looked under the bonnet and we found that their top suspension mount on this side was very rusted out as well. And uh, that meant basically changing the whole strut. It's the best way to do it. It is dangerous, can't leave it as it was. And while we're there, we're also gonna change the drop link as well. So what I'm gonna do first is to get this car up in the air, get it up on an axle stand, uh, take the wheel off, and then we can investigate and carry out with the job. So I'll put you on time lapse for that. I'll see you in a minute. Right, there we go, all safely jacked up there. I'm happy with that now. I've left the axle stand under there with also the trolley jack, and I've also shoved the wheel under the side of the thing as well. Always give it a good rock afterwards just to make sure that it is stable, which this is. And um, one thing I didn't realise, when I was actually jacking it up, the uh, alarm went off on the car, so I had to run in and get the key to mute the alarm, so I left the key inside. So I didn't realise that's probably because these are quite often jacked up and people take the catalytic converters underneath and steal them. I've seen that done on many other cars on the YouTube videos, for example. So yeah, something I didn't realise. Check the car up, imbalances it, sets the alarm off. That's a good thing to know, isn't it? So this is the reason why we're changing this shock. Let me show you. I don't know whether or not you can see or not, but this is often overlooked because nine times out of 10, there's a cap over the top of that. If you take the uh, cap off, that's supposed to be a dust protector. And as you can probably see there, I don't know if you can get there because there's shadows there, but. Um, it's really corroded in there, and that's the main bolt there which holds the uh, shock absorber in. And on the other one, on the other side, as you probably know in the previous video, we had to change the shock absorber because this top mounting had actually corroded away. Now you can just buy the top mountings on their own, as we did the last time, but um, again, we decided to change the shock absorber. This is just the top mount, which you can probably buy, and you can probably see it better here. That's what you should be looking at. And that plate inside is where the actual shock comes through and there's a nut that sits on the top there. And you probably can't see it, but the nut is actually totally corroded away. So there's a very good chance that this one would go very shortly as well. This costs about 38 pounds if you're just gonna change the top, but because the nut is corroded and the threads are corroded on the actual shock itself, we're gonna be changing the whole lot. We're gonna be retaining the original spring as we did on the other side as well though. So looking under the wheel arch, this has all got to come out here which basically means undoing the top clamp, which is these two plastic clips there. You just prise these apart. That loosens off the top fixing. That's all that holds the top uh, strut mount in. So that's that got to be unclipped. Down here on the main part of the shock absorber, you've got the two bolts that fix it through to the, uh, the floating disc uh, area there. And then we've got the uh, drop link there, which has got to be undone. There's a couple of cables clips just to undo here. One there, and also the cable connector for the uh, the sensor pads. And then basically we should be able to take this whole lot out. I don't need to compress the spring at this moment in time because it's all contained within the actual shock and spring setup. So all this should come out in one go. We've then got to compress the spring once this is out to remove that top bolt if we can. Take this spring off and then we can fit the new shock, which as you can probably see we've got there. So that's the job today. This isn't really a how-to, a lot of this you'll be seeing on time-lapse. Uh, it's just me doing this job, because I've actually done this job on the other side anyway. I just thought I'd take you along for the ride on this one, so let's get going.
Okay, right, what I've done now is I've just loosened these two bolts there, as you can probably see. I've taken off this clip here, which holds the um, sensor on, and also the brake line hose clip there. It's just a little C clip, which you just pull out from the back there. I'm gonna undo these two drop link arms now. We're gonna replace the drop link, so I'm not worried about this going back on. And uh, there are many different ways to do this, but uh, depending on how tight these threads are, there is a little flat on the back of these right up in there, which you probably can't see, which you can hold on. But the easiest way to do it, so I've been told, and I've actually done it on the uh, uh, the last one we done, was to basically just basically break this plastic drop link off. That leaves you with a ball at the back. Hold the ball with a pair of mole grips and try and spin the nut off the front there. The one at the bottom tends to be more difficult because there's not much room to get in there and you've got to come at it from the back. So um, I'm going to do that now and I'll see you in a second. Right, I thought I'd show you this. This is the um, top one off of the uh, drop link there, as you can probably see. And what you've got on the back of it is this sort of effort, as you can probably see, that goes in there like that. And this ball socket is actually in there and that's what holds it on. So, to undo the, the nut off of the surface here, you'll find that this shaft does start to spin. Now there is an Allen key in there which you're supposed to be able to hold back on, but realistically these things are on so tight you're never going to be able to hold back uh, with a, an Allen key on that. So what you've got at the back of these is two little flats as you can probably see. Uh, I don't know if, can you see that? There's two flats on there which you can actually get a spanner on, but the chances are, look how small that is them two flats there there's only two little side flats there as you can probably see and to hold a spanner on there bearing in mind how tight this thing is is going to be a nigh an impossible task so the way to do it really is to basically smash this plastic drop link off and the way i've done that that was on there i just basically jammed a screwdriver just on the edge there and hit it with a club hammer and then this pops off and what you're able to do then is if you can see around the back there you can grab hold of the ball with a pair of mole grips and hold it in there, let these just spin and lock in wherever they're gonna lock. And then basically undo this nut on the front. And the way I did that again is to use a extension bar, as you can probably see there, because you really need a big lever to be able to undo this. You don't wanna be in there with a little short socket wrench, you'll be there forever. So outside the wheel arch, undo it, and then keep undoing it until it comes off. And that's basically the way I've got that off. The other way to do it, if you can't undo this nut, is to get a flat one millimeter disc on a grinder. And when you've just cracked this nut, for example, and you've pulled this out of the way, and you may not be able to hold the back there, you can just get a grinder and grind the back of this and cut the flat off there, the bolt off there, then this will just fall out. I was able to do it just by holding it with mole grips, as I just told you, and that's the way I've got over that. This one's a lot more difficult at the bottom there because you can't really get it. This one on the last one I done, I had to actually cut off by coming in this way with a grinder. So this, just pull off, as you can see, like I've just done there, that gets that ball out of the way. There we go, just pull that off like that. Get the rubber boot off. And now you can cleanly see the ball on the back there. You can see the two little flats there, which they, they give you the hold back on with a spanner. But realistically, you're never going to do that because as soon as it starts to loosen, the spanner flops about all over the place. So just grab it off like that. Hold on to that with the mole grips until it locks in place. And then undo the nut from the other side. So that's what I'm going to do now. Right, with regards to the bottom ball joint on this drop link, what I've found the best way to do it here is to get the mole grips, as you can see, on the ball once you've actually broken it away. Uh, you can get a, a socket, a 19mm socket, just through the drive shaft there and the uh, subframe, and this mole grip turns anti-clockwise and goes up and it stops turning because of the uh, the track rod end arm there, as you can probably see, and it allows you just literally to get, if you hold back on that like that, it just enables you to get one turn at a time, and you're able to undo this back nut under control only one at a time so I'm going to just do that now and get it off right so before we go any further let's get this top plastic clip off here and all we've got to basically do is just open up these um, little plastic things here a lot easier said than done I would imagine I'm using two screwdrivers one to go underneath and one to lift up as you can probably see hold on 
I don't know whether all kits come with new ones of these or not, I'm not sure, but uh, just be aware that you might not want to break this in case you haven't got a replacement. These blinking planes flying over the top. The tiles have had to stop recording. There we go. Let's get that side out. Put that up there. It'd be easier just to put a jack or a block of something underneath the hub, because all the weight of the hub is basically on that, so I'll just stick a trolley jack under there. And as you can see, I was just able to pull that clip out like that, so. That's the way to do that first. Coming back under here, I'll just remove these nuts from here. And don't forget, we've got that supported on the um, trolley jack now. I'll just give these bolts a little tap. Through it out. I've got a little drift here as well, just to... Yeah, as I say, you might want to just jiggle about with the weight of this, just to um, make sure there's no tension on the bolts at all. Yeah, see how loose the bolts are now, look. So let's just push that one right out. There we go, that's one off. And this one below it. Yeah, we just pulled that one out. So lever this forward, and literally, this should come out in one go. Just lever that out of there like that. There we go. And then you get your hands in there, pull it all out in one go. And as you can probably see, there's our shock. Let's get that out of there. And spring complete in one go. As I said, we're gonna be using the original spring here, but don't forget this spring is under a lot of tension, not like the other side, but I've done the other side. So we have to compress this spring first. Somehow get this nut off of there, as you can probably see now, it's totally corroded in there. And this is gonna be a big problem. I might have to uh, grind that off, but uh, first things first, I'm gonna compress the spring. You haven't got to see that, I did that in my uh, last video. So we can get this spring off, because we've got to reuse it. And also this gator here as well, we're gonna put back on. Right, okay, I'm gonna do that now. Right, I've been round to the log cabin. I've had to, as you know, I probably couldn't get that nut undone. So what I've actually done there, if you could probably see, I've got a grinding disc and I've ground round the top of it there and I've taken the top off, that just gives me better access to the nut that was in there, although it was still pretty deep. And then I've got the grinding disc, cut down two sides of the nut, and then hammered it off. As you can see, look, that's what I've done there. If you can probably see the nut there, it was quite a way down in there. And it's got a flange at the bottom there as well, so you've got to cut through that as well. Then I hammered it with a chisel to basically split the nut. And what that's done then, it allows us to take this top mount off now. You actually just lift the shock absorber off now it all comes off in one bit like that there's the bump stop which we're going to need to reuse again so we've got to keep hold of that uh, that goes there I want to make sure that I've got the right shock just by holding them next to each other because they are handed I think you'll find and uh, everything seems to look all right there they do put this little clip on it there and as you can see it comes with a new nut as well so I'm happy that that's the right height shock and everything. So um, just lean that there for a minute. I'm just gonna put a bit of tension down on this here. Just move that clip and as you can see that starts to come up there. Just remove that clip. And that's our top mount there as you know, with our new nut on. So basically what I'm gonna replace here is I'm going to be keeping the rubber boot and the new bumps and the bump stop there. So where did I put it? So that can slide back in there like that. It's just going to be on there like that. The rubber boot can come out and that can go back on over the top there. This whole contraption then sits on the top of the new shock like that. This lifts on over the shock absorber that the new top mount to the seats and then get our new nut and washer just plonk that on there and you want to make sure you do this nut up I didn't do it like up in the last video and we had to come back to it and tighten it up again afterwards 
So we'll just tighten this up by hand first of all. To tighten this up properly, you will need a socket which you can pass an Allen key through. And I made my own one here. As you can see, it's a socket you can put a Allen key through the middle. I had to drill this one out, although you can buy them. And I put two flats on it so you can hold it with a spanner. And would you believe it, on this one it's a different size than that. <laughs> there you go, just shows isn't it, nothing standardised. So I've now got to make another one of these so that I can do this nut up. I'll see you in a minute. I've just found that one of my spark plug spanners fits the top there, which is handy because it's got a, a provision for me to get a, an adjustable spanner around the edge of it. So the six mil Allen key goes straight through the middle so I can hold back on that. And what you need to do now, which I don't think I've brought out here, <laughs> is my big adjustable spanner. But I've got some adjustables here, which I can use just for a minute. And I'll tend to hold the uh, Allen key with a pair of um, mole grips just to keep it tight. Okay, so if I just grab hold of that like that. Okay. And then this should be a spanner, as you probably know. And then we can tighten our top nut up properly. Don't forget it's a nylock nut as well. You don't want to be using these, what I'm using. I just can't be bothered to walk out there again for the eighth time. <sighs> right, I'm going to leave that like that just for the minute and I will finally tighten it up when it's on the car. So that's that. So what I'm going to do now is just to take the tension slowly off of our springs. Make sure that the coil at the bottom is in its correct position. There we go. And then slowly start to release your tension. Oh, it's tight. There we go. I have lubricated these threads, by the way, with some WD, but you could put grease on them. Where did I put it? Just makes undoing them a bit easier. If you do these bit at a time, it'll just make undoing them a bit easier. Because if you undo one completely, it'll put too much tension on the other two and you probably won't undo them. You know, a lot of people say that these clamps are no good whatsoever, but uh, they're okay for the do-it-yourself like me. Um, and they will save you taking it to a garage and getting them compressed. There you go, third and final one off, and there's the new shock ready to be installed with the new bump cap on it. Let's put it in. So as you can see, the bottom of the spring fits into a little groove there, just to make you see that you've got everything in the right position. There's our top nut there, as you can see, we're gonna tighten it out fully when we get it on the car and hold him back with the six mil Allen key in the middle. This is ready to go back in position, so let's get that in. Right, okay, let's just slide this in there. That's got to go up the turret there. There we go, pull it out of there. Push that up through there. Like that. Just get it in position. Like that. Now again, you might have to um, juggle about with a screwdriver here to get this sitting correctly. There we go. Push through the hole. There we go, that's through. Right, we'll get this uh, top clip put back on. This again can only go on one way really, so don't be fooled into thinking it can uh, go on two ways. You might just want to centralise this and then jack up on the hub. As you can see, it's pulling up there now. Doing one more. There we go, we're fully up now. I've just done the jack up a couple of pump, pumps there and this as you can see then fits in nicely and you then want to squeeze this together probably with some uh, channel lock pliers just pull it together there we go just they go in there nicely like that when you pull it together look there we go and that little clip now is on 
and we can now take the weight off the suspension and that's not going to come out but don't forget we must tighten this up right so our socket goes on there like that our six mil allen key goes in there like that i'm just going to lock that onto there for the moment there we go and now this can be tightened up there we go that's tight take that off and off she pops that's it perfect Okay, here we go. That's the uh, drop link in, as you can see. It's both swiveling, both are swiveling okay. I put a 19 mil open-ended spanner on the back of that and done this front nut up with a 19 mil socket. You have got the Allen key provision there for doing it that way. I just found it easier doing it with a 19 mil socket on the two flats at the back there. So that's that. Uh, there's the uh, hose for the brake line. And I'm just putting that final clip in for that sensor cable there into that clip there and that's it that's the job done that's the new suspension strut in uh, a lot of you might have said that uh oh you should have put a new spring on well the old springs are fine to be honest with you and we put the old spring back on the other side so they are a balanced pair anyway so that's that and while you're here always check the discs and the pads and all that these look all good so there's no servicing needed to be done there so all i'm going to do now is to put the road wheel back on and um then call it a day this bottom nut, by the way, I managed to put a socket on the back there, uh, a 19 mil socket. And again, I held back with a 19 mil spanner on this side. And that just enabled me to turn the spanner and the ratchet was doing its own thing on that side. Although the ratchet was being held still. So that's the way I did that one up. Right, okay, that's it. Make sure everything's okay underneath there. Someone did come up with a good idea, one of my subscribers. As these dust covers on here don't seem to do anything, the ones that you put on there, as you've got on the other side there, because this was the actual dust cover on that one there that was on this original one. And as you saw on the original one, that didn't stop any of the corrosion in there. One of my subscribers suggested putting some um, grease in there or, put, or putting some oil in there, uh, and that would stop the corrosion as well. So that's probably a good idea. Pack that with grease or oil, uh, maybe not oil because it might run through into the uh, actual shock absorber and people might think that you've got a leak in shock. So I'd probably pack it with grease if that was me and that should protect it from going rusty. So I think I better give it a test drive. Start it up. Right, should start okay. Oh, hello. Another flat battery. We're not going to be able to start it up and test drive it because it's got a flat battery. I did put my dead one on there, which was the one off of my um, signal before I changed it. So it's going to need a new battery anyway. Oh, well, that's as much as we can do there. I know the jobs are good. One. So we'll have to call it a day there. I hope you enjoyed this little video. It's not a how-to video. This is just how I've come up against the job and I've got over it on my driveway with limited tools. Anyway, thanks very much. And I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.